You know, do you ever have just a moment where you don't want to do any editing on a video? Well, that's what this is going to be. Um, I'm just going to shoot this straight through. I'm going to add it to the last video I did, and here we go. So, uh, the point is, is the, when you do this and you start welding on your car, you want to make sure all the weight of the car is on the tires, or at least in this case, the rear axle. So I've got the jack stands all leveled out. The weight of the car is 100% level, Number is the main thing. It also has to be... Saving my ass if I... If something falls. Um, this connector has been put in here. I don't even know why I'm filming this. This is probably so shaky, it's not even worth seeing. Anyhow, I've got this jack with some two by sixes. Probably tested this thing like 10 times to get it as best as I can. I've taken a plasma cutter and a flappy disc and cut this out to get it just right. Right there's a gap, but it'll be tighter than that when I get some more pressure on it. So these fit pretty good, but realistically, they just give you a rough shape and then you gotta cut them to, ma to match your floor, but floor pan because every pan is gonna have a little bit different shape to it. So when you buy these things from AMD or whoever, you're gonna have to spend quite a bit of time getting them to, to match. And even here, this is a really wide gap. You're not gonna be able to weld that up very well. And to be honest, that's one of the best supports that this can have. So Right now I don't have this position quite right. The frame rail is going to come, I'm sorry, the subframe is going to come over. Let me start over. The subframe connector is going to come over this way about an eighth of an inch, maybe a little more. And that'll look better here in a few minutes. But you want everything to look about like that, I'm sure. So that's, that's about a sixteenth of an inch gap. When this slides over, it's going to be a little better. I'm not going to weld this 100% solid. I think I'm going to end up welding it in sections. Um, I don't know, I'm just gonna have it available to be welded everywhere, but I don't think I'm gonna weld up 100% of this gap all the way across. I will weld this, the bottom, the sides up on the back side of here. Obviously this section will get hit and probably in here, this, but I think there's gonna be sometimes a gap where I might leave a section that doesn't get welded. Um, I'm just gonna see how it looks. I think it might look better that way and still function just fine, so we'll see. And then when I get all done, I'll finish priming it and putting a uh, weld through primer. But like a big gap like this, you can't, um, you can't do much with that. That's just gotta be that way. They do provide you some holes in the bottom of these connectors. There's one there and one here. There's another one up in the front. Um, I trimmed this back so it'll get a real nice weld in here, all the way in the top and then down the side and the bottom of the frame here. I kind of don't like that R being there. I might weld that up and grind it back down. Sorry this video is so shitty, but that's just the best I can do with the headlight on and dark. And So anyhow, see these little spots, like that little black, uh, this little black Sharpie mark right there. Okay, we're gonna shoot this straight through. I'm just gonna document a little bit about how I have this set up. The car's sitting level right now. All the weight is on the front brake rotors. I could have left the tires on it and put it on some kind of blocks or something like that so I had space to crawl underneath the car, but guess what, I don't have any of those. So I just pulled the wheels off, put the jack stands right here. Um, you really want to have all the weight of the car on the four points that it would be sitting on the ground, which on a charger's case would be the rear axle way back there. So I've got stands right underneath the, the tubing of the rear axle. And then up here on the front, I've got it out by the rotors. That's going to be just fine. The, uh, the, the problem is, is if you don't do that and you use a two post hoist, a two post hoist to lift this thing up, um, you're gonna have problems with your door gaps. You know, if you ever watch your car when you lift it on a two post hoist, this gap can flex just a little bit. Your door gaps up here by the roof, yada yada. So you really don't wanna have this up in the air doing at least the first few welds. 
until you have it, um, until you have it like welded at the front part of the subframe connector and the back part, or in this case, since I have it backwards, I may as well flip this around. Um, and, then, and then also get a few welds maybe in the middle while this thing's on the ground like this. And then when we get to have enough welds on here, in this position, I can raise the car up the rest of the way and, and then uh, finish the welding up in the air where it's a little easier to get to things. So anyhow, this is how I'm gonna do this. I'm using a floor jack. And this is a piece of square tubing. Off of a carport that I have out there. This is probably not gonna work. I don't know if you guys will be able to see what I'm doing. I think you'll kind of be able to see. Jack this up with an extra hand here. And what I'll end up doing is putting a little bit of weight on this at first. And then I'll actually put a lot more weight on it so that there's no gaps between the frame connector and the floor of the car. There we go. Okay, now that won't fall on the head. Spin this around. Again, you don't really want to have um, very much unknown about where this car is. As far as how this thing fits, you want it to be perfect all the way from front to back. Let me get a hammer here real quick. Plug your ears for two seconds. Tap on this a little bit. I'll put a little more weight on it, but you don't want to lift the car. You just want to like compress the floor. Right in the middle a little bit. I've already had this thing test fitted so many times up in the air and on the ground. It's like I'm saying, if you have weld that's just a 32nd of an inch off or even less that's where it's now at forever so the more accurate you get it the less chance you're gonna have of having alignment issues later with your doors and the rest of your suspension oh, man. I got one spot happy with. I'm going to lower this down and slide it backwards a little bit. I think I need more pressure on the back of it. Than the front. There we go. All right. I don't know how you're supposed to video this crap and do the car at the same time. But these gaps are about perfect. I want just about a sixteenth of an inch of airspace between the two um, in some places that I'm going to be welding. I'm gonna fix that here in just a minute. I'll hammer on that some more, but see that gap, that's pretty wide. You don't wanna be filling in gaps like that, especially up here, because this is the most, um, I would imagine this weld 
is going to be some of the most important parts of the welding that we'll be doing. So that has to be perfect. Back here, things are looking pretty good. Okay, we're going to slide in here from the passenger side. We're going way over here to the driver's side. So here's what we have. We have a nice exact gap up here. There's no gap as far as the weld goes, but there's a finger width right here before it gets to the floor. It's a nice tight seam. It's a little loose right there, but that's probably not where I'm going to weld anyway. I'll probably weld more back on this uh, support from the original part of the car. Um, might get a weld in here because this is a pretty nice spot. And then up along in here and farther up in there. This is a part of the floor that I replaced. This is an all original floor from here forwards uh, because it was in such good shape. But there was one rust hole in here I went ahead and fixed. And by the time I'm all done, you won't even be able to see it. That's just one section I replaced. And then um, again, all this contour up in here comes with these. And that contour is there from the original part, but you have to you have to make it uh, way better than it comes shipped to you. So you're going to spend some time grinding and sanding and, uh, you know, dremeling things down or whatever you're going to use, flapper wheel or something. This this gap up here is pretty wide. I'm not real happy with that. Um, but that's as good as I can get it. It's going to be fine. This I notched out just to make it look a little bit more factory. I'm going to end up putting a weld around here, just like I did on this side. Well, I guess I haven't finished it yet. But there's a weld here and there will be a weld around that circle drain and then back up in here anyhow that's the underside of my car it's coming along sometimes people just watch charger videos just to find where certain brackets are at maybe you need to know where your uh, emergency brake cable is supposed to be routed i still am a little confused on how that goes but i have some of the original parts and I've got some of it over there tied up to the frame rail, or to the uh, seam, whatever, but I think I'm missing some, I don't know what goes through here, if the cable goes through here or whatever. And then by the way, you have to drill a hole um, through this on both sides for your cable to run through. I'm gonna do that later, and I was a little concerned that I was gonna have a lot of uh, you know, metal shavings inside of this thing that I've already painted internally but I think I'm just gonna put a magnet in here after I find out where to drill these holes and whatever metal bits are left in there, I'll magnet it out and hope for the best, all right? So there's that. Isn't that an ugly weld? Oh my God. That's gonna get fixed later. Sorry, you have to see that. Um, what else? This differential is never gonna stay in this car for more than the first year it's on the road, but it will be a good one to break in. The engine and stuff with. Look at that, there's original, original green paint and then they painted the car. Um, still routing some of these fuel lines and stuff perfectly later on. I guess I'm just rambling at this point. I'll probably edit all this out. Look at that nice straight door. <laughs> some nice, nice 80s body work right there. All right, here we go. So this is where I landed. I didn't weld this part up here on the inside, but I did weld it on the outside. Okay, so it's welded here. We've got a couple on the floor, right in the middle. And then I've got a continuous weld right here on the outside. So I got that much welding done. And then I just lifted it up in the air and I'll do the rest of this in the air. So I feel like that's about the best you can do. Best I can do. It's gonna turn out awesome. I'm really glad to have both of those off of my shop floor and on this car. I think it's looking awesome. I don't know. Hopefully it turns out good enough to be worthwhile. I think this car is going to take some other torque box work. I don't really know. There's, I feel like things that need to be done on this car. This is the only damage really underneath this car. Just kind of a funny, uh, I don't know what it hit ran into something at some point in his life but that's pretty minor it's such a solid car there's really just no no real problems with the frame or anything i've had to do so that's very blessed that way 